Hey everybody, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khaled Maidan. In today's video, we're going to show you how to effectively test resisted movements of the cervical spine so we can see whether the muscle groups affecting this area are weak or painful. And when we're looking at resisted tests, there are two key things we need to consider. Power, which can be measured on the Oxford scale between 0 and 5, and pain. So, with that in mind, it's time for our main video. Let's get clinical. So first, we're going to assess resisted cervical spine flexion. For this test, the patient is normally in a sitting position, and the therapist stands laterally to the patient. I'm simply standing behind so that you can see the technique more clearly. In terms of handling, the therapist placed one hand on the thoracic spine and the other hand on the patient's forehead in front. And it's important to know that we're using the flat hand position so that it makes it more comfortable for the patient. And in order to create the test, we're going to ask the patient to bring their cervical spine in a flex position by drawing their chin down towards their chest whilst we apply our isometric pressure. And we can do that as so, asking the patient to flex their cervical spine. Common cheats that you may see during this test is either if the patient tries to slump their thoracic spine in order to activate their abdominal muscles to try and generate more power for the movement. You may also find that instead of bringing their cervical spine into a true flexed position, the patient simply protracts their cervical spine, which is the incorrect way to test this resisted movement. And the muscles that control cervical spine flexion are now for you to see on the screen. So when we're assessing the resisted movements, we're looking for pain and power. In terms of power, we score the patient's resisted movement on the Oxford score between 0 and 5 to assess how strong the movement is. And in terms of pain, you may find that if your patient does have neck pain and has weak cervical spine resisted flexion, this may tell you about weakness of the deep neck flexor muscles. And therefore, you may choose some stabilization exercises as a part of your treatment to improve the deep neck flexors. You may also find that your patient generates pain in other areas when reproducing this movement. For example, they may have pain in the upper trapezius muscles. And this may tell you that these muscles are overactive and are potentially compensating for the fact that they have weak flexion muscles. And therefore, addressing this by strengthening the deep neck flexor muscles may be an important part of your treatment. Next, we're going to look at resisted cervical spine extension. And for this test, the patient is again in a sitting position, and the therapist typically stands laterally to the patient. I'm simply standing behind so that you can see the technique more clearly. In terms of our handling, we place one hand on the posterior aspect of the patient's head in order to uh, produce our isometric pressure and the other hand can be placed on the patient's shoulder to stabilize the movement. From here, we ask the patient to extend their cervical spine into our hands to test the strength of the neck extensor muscles. The most common cheat that you'll see your patient do during this test is that they try and extend their lumbar and thoracic spine to try and generate more movement instead of simply uh, extending the cervical spine. And the muscles that control resisted cervical spine extension are now on the screen for you to see. So as we said before, we're now going to consider power and pain in terms of resisted cervical spine extension. In terms of power, you will measure your, resisted, your patient's resisted strength on the Oxford scale between 0 and 5. And in terms of pain, the most common presentation you will find with the neck extensor muscles is that they tend to be too overactive, thus creating a muscle imbalance around the area. You may find that restoration of this muscle imbalance by strengthening the muscles that are too weak is one of the potential solutions for solving this problem. So now we're going to assess resisted cervical spine rotation. For this test, the patient again is in a sitting position and the therapist normally stands in front of the patient to test the movement. I'm simply standing behind so you can see the technique more clearly. 
In terms of handling, the therapist placed one hand on the opposite shoulder to the side that we're testing rotation, and our other hand providing the isometric resistance is going to be on the lateral aspect of the patient's forehead like so. So from here, we ask our patient to rotate round to the left side in order to test left-sided rotation. And then we recreate the same on the opposite side so that we test right-sided rotation. The most common cheats that you'll find when your patient is recreating this test is that they try and generate more power by rotating their thoracic spine as well as their cervical spine. And therefore, your hand that's being placed on the opposite shoulder to stabilize the thoracic spine is really important. And the muscles that control the cervical spine rotation are now on the screen for you to see. So, as we've done before, we're now going to look at pain and power in terms of cervical spine rotation. In terms of power, we grade the patient's strength on the Oxford scale between 0 and 5. And in terms of pain, cervical spine rotation is created by a combination of the neck flexor and neck extensor muscles working in a pattern to recreate the movement. Therefore, if you find that your patient has weak neck flexor muscles and strong neck extensor muscles, you may choose to give neck flexor strengthening exercises rather than simply cervical spine rotation exercises. And that's because if you simply give cervical spine rotation exercises, you may be reinforcing the same pattern that the patient has previously, and therefore the neck flexors will stay weak and the neck extensors will stay strong, and therefore the patient may well continue to have the same pain. Finally, we're going to examine cervical spine side flexion in a resisted manner. As before, the patient is going to be in a sitting position and the therapist will stand in front of the patient. I'm simply standing behind the patient so you can see the technique more clearly on the video. As for handling, the therapist places one hand on the opposite shoulder to the side being tested and our hand providing the isometric pressure is going to be on the lateral aspect of the patient's head, just above the ear, like so. And from here, we can ask the patient to side flex towards the left side, like so. And then we can repeat the test on the other side, like so. The most common cheat you may find your patient do with this particular test is that they will try to side flex their thoracic spine as they try and side flex their cervical spine in order to generate more power and the muscles that control cervical spine side flexion are now on the screen for you to see. So in terms of pain and power, for power we are measuring the patient's strength on the Oxford scale between 0 and 5. And in terms of pain, pain on any resisted test implicates the active contractile structures that are involved in that resisted movement. So, in the case of the lateral flexors, any pain on that movement implicates the lateral flexors of the neck and shows that there is a dysfunction with these muscles. Of additional interest, the shoulder girdle relies on an element of support from the lateral neck flexors in order for it to function correctly. And so a weakness in the lateral flexors of the neck will reduce shoulder girdle stability and can create dysfunction. Either the shoulder girdle will have to take on the additional role as a neck stabilizer, or the shoulder girdle will have to function itself with less support. In both instances, this can create pain and dysfunction, which may well be affecting your patient's condition. So let's summarize this video on resisted tests of the cervical spine. Test resisted cervical spine flexion, extension, rotation, and side flexion as a part of your patient examination. Make sure you are aware of the different handling techniques for each test. Score the patient's strength from 0 to 5 on the Oxford scale and look out for any pain when the resisted tests are performed. Consider any of the regular cheat patterns that were mentioned in this video so that you know you are accurately testing each movement. And that completes our video on resisted tests of the cervical spine. 
Next, I'd like to suggest you have a look at our other videos as a part of the cervical spine assessment catalogue, including active range of movement and passive range of movement testing. Thank you as always for joining us on Clinical Physio, and we'll see you again soon.